Uh, injuries for today, Aaron Banks, uh, Toa won't practice. Zakel um, ended up having surgery on a bicep. It was sore. We sent him for an MRI later on um, Monday. I ended up being torn, so he needs surgery, so he'll be done for the year. Um, Trent Williams has a vet day. Um, won't practice. We'll say slash ankle for you because it's still sore. Um, so I don't get it a couple weeks from now. Um, uh, Flanagan fouls, ankle limited. Um, Colton, ankle slash knee limited. Go ahead. Do you need to bring somebody up from the offensive line to the active roster to place? Uh, yes. Do you know who that's going to be? Not yet. Like a tryout this week? To yep. Obviously, an injury happened in practice. Is it Kells? Yeah. No, it was in the game. Yeah. yeah. It was a little thing, just bicep So It wasn't like your normal tear. It was a little one that was high and complained about it all day. We sent him in and uh, it had a slight tear and got a couple of opinions. They said it's only going to get worse, so we had to do the surgery. Carl, when you have a you know player and he's got multiple kind of coaches here and both away, and away from the building, how do you kind of sort out the way that he hears instruction from either you or what he's heard from other people to make sure it's all kind of straight in his head? I don't know anybody I've coached who's got other coaches from outside the building. You know, a throwing coach in Jacksonville. He's got a guy who he grew up with. Yeah, those are like strength and conditioning coaches, but in terms of throwing, they just work on the mechanics of throwing. But that's, I, that's. Well, I mean, those, those guys are. Quarterback coaches. I mean, Dan Minucci is a guy who trains quarterbacks. Oh, I understand. I don't think you understand. Um, coaches in this building, we don't sit in like you don't talk mechanics all week. You prepare them for a game plan. That's what you do in the season. Um, you get them ready for the offense that we're running, the defense that we're going on. Um, when you work to improve your footwork and arm strength, just like a wide out in the off season, they go to improve how they drop their hips, how they do quickness off the line. <coughs> they do cone drills, stuff like that. Um, but when you're here and you get it by position coaches, it's not. It's it's about football and preparing for the game. So um, you don't. That doesn't happen during the year. In the uh, not that like folks didn't do some of this stuff, you know, in the first eight games, but it did seem with the defensive line and some of the looks, maybe were a little more unique or creative. Um, and particularly not, notably on on some of the bigger plays, some sacks. And, um, Anyway, is that a fair assessment, or would you say, no, you're, you're kind of the same thing? Um, I mean, I thought our two ends inside and the A-gaps was a new thing, um, but that was the only one I saw. How much were you involved in, in sort of helping to self-scout the defense over the bye? Um, no more than what I usually do. I just help when I can, and those guys would always work on the majority of the week, and uh, nothing more than usual. See impressions of Hargrave in that game, and, and to this point, how, how do you think he's produced for you this year? Um, I've been real happy with Javon. Um, I thought he did a real good job in that game. Um, got the quarterback off his spot a lot, which I think he's one of the better ones at winning fast. Um, him and Nick. Um, but I thought our just our group as a whole, whether he was getting the quarterback to move or other people were getting the quarterback to move to come to him, uh, I thought collectively they did it their best. Noticeable difference with, with Chase in there in terms of setting up some of the other stuff. Yeah, I did. Uh, especially when he broke to the right, just Chase's speed. To, I, uh, Trevor got out of there one time and his speed to get to him, make it a three yard run. Um, just some of the push on the tackle, just getting a quarterback off a spot that makes him move into other places, but it was definitely help. Do you think Chase's addition kind of gave Bosa a little extra pep in his step, too? Uh, I don't know. You can ask him. I think Bosa was pretty excited for that game as it was. and. Um, but I know Bosa likes him and likes having people he likes around him. Was there less chipping on, uh, on Bosa in that game? Than What's he, that? Were there less, few, fewer chips? Uh, it seemed like it. I, you know, I didn't get the whole tally or anything, but just thinking back to it, it seemed like a little bit. What do you respect about the Buccaneers? Um, I respect that. I think they have a chance to win every game they play in. So they had a good record um, to start. I know they lost a couple of tight ones. Coming back with a big one last week. Um, I think they make it very tough to run the ball against. I think uh, Winfield and Veda Villa are two of the best players in what they do. Uh, and I think they have an offense with, um, you can never fall asleep on Mike Evans. Uh, he's as scary now as he was 10 years ago. Uh, I got a lot of respect for Baker. 
um, and how he plays the position and stuff. So uh, I think they're a good team. Bucks got 13 hits on the quarterback last week. What, are the, what is their defensive front? look like and and what do you expect to see from bowls um i mean it's similar um to last week i mean they, they can run every blitz uh, he can do that at any time he'll pick and choose when to do them but uh, you got to be ready at any time in the game um you know you you don't know where v- vita is going to be on third down but uh, when he's pushing the center inside is a problem when he's on tag whoever he's pushing um is a problem and they've had some pretty good successful edge rushers too that get to the quarterback You've had a lot of success in, in the red zone defensively. Is there anything you can put your finger on there that, that is helping them? In that um, not in particular. Um, I'll get a little bit more into that later in the week, but uh, not in particular. I, I know when you're a good run defense, um, it's one of the easiest ways to be successful in the red zone is to run the ball in offense. So um, when you're a good run defense, I know it gets a lot harder down there for offenses. Brock's played 17 games now. It's like the equivalent of one season is all, and he's accomplished a lot. What do you... Um, what do you still want to see from him as far as going forward, as far as being an ascending player? Um, I just like guys. I just feel you're always getting better or worse. So I like him to just continue to get better. Um, I thought what he showed last year and the time he played, he showed he was capable of being our starting quarterback. And uh, I don't think anything's been different this year so far. Do you have any different opinion of the first touchdown after watching it on film? No. Uh, <laughs> I was happy he did it. And now I love the result. Love the result. First start was against these guys against Todd Bowles in this defense. What what did you learn from him in that first start? And- um, it, it was it was similar to what he did in the Miami game. I mean, just to be thrown in there, some stuff not go perfect, and just to watch him not get rattled throughout it. Um, and he had a big mess up on that first play of the game and took a pretty big shot for it and got the personal foul. So it was a very strategic, explosive by him. Um, but the way he bounced back from that, and I think it was the next drive or maybe a couple plays later that he broke his rib and no one had any idea till the next morning. Um, not that he was hiding it, he just didn't think it was broke. So just the guy to be under duress like that and um, his first time really with us in a full game and the way he played, and I think it was pretty good foreshadowing on how he's handled everything for the next 16 games. When you watched a film of Brock Perry, with, with Brock of his first touchdown pass, does he agree with you that it was a bad decision or does he feel like that's a play he can make? No, he agrees with me by the time he gets to the sideline. Yeah, no, Brock, Brock sees football pretty well. He's, I mean, no one's going to be perfect. Um, people, it's really easy when you're watching from afar. You got to react and play football in the pocket or outside the pocket. And but there's, he knows when he makes a bad decision, and um, that's why it's fun to talk to about it. Fun to coach. I have an injury report question for you. Is, awesome. Is Banks out or is it just out? He's out. He's out yeah. for the game. Yeah. On the second touchdown pass, the one Kittle. Uh, you were standing pretty much right there where the ball was coming. Was that is that intentional placement by you to get that kind of know where that 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 play is unfolding? And- uh, I usually always stand as far away as I can so I can try to see 22 um, players. Um, but I also know when there's a chance the ball is going deep, I like to always tell the ref how they're about to grab them and not let them go deep. Um, but they didn't. They let them go, so it was nice. Yeah, the idea in real time of how. Why that pocket was for Brock and what kind of throw that was? No, I don't totally know. I just look at the coverages, then I have an idea where the ball should go based off that. And I see Kittle's release, and I look back to the pocket, and I can't see anybody. And it looks like someone's throwing a grenade out of a bunker. <laughs> and I'm just watching it and hoping it lands in Kittle's hands. And once it does, I felt pretty good about it. What you think of the that? coverage, your guys' pass coverage, and what you, how'd you evaluate the job that Ambry did back there? I thought Ambry did a good job. Um, a couple of penalties he wants to eliminate, um, but I thought he stepped in. They challenged him a couple of times. Uh, he didn't back away from any of it. Um, stopped a couple of go routes, especially there in the end zone. Thought he contested a comeback real well, and I thought he was good um, with the physicality in the run game. Your, your reaction on Kittle's touchdown was pretty, I don't know, to blow sunshine here, but looked pretty cool. I mean, <laughs> kind of gave it the fist pump and didn't even, and then just walked away triumphantly, not even looking at Kittle. Uh, that's because <laughs> I was the last one, so I knew. I didn't have to look what was behind me. So, I mean, he was all that was left. I'm not trying to look cool. It's a stressed out, tight reaction of exhale. Um, but I wasn't trying to be cool. Is that I knew no one was behind him. I was the deepest guy. So I didn't have to look and make sure he didn't trip over the goal line. I was counting on him not to. So when the offense is on the field and, and, and you're watching, you're watching the secondary and trying to figure out where the ball should go as the play's happening. You watch secondary, watch fronts, you watch coverage, you. It's not just where it should go, it's where you know it's going to go um, based off of how long we block and look and 
it's also so you can have an idea of what to call next and pick up stuff throughout the game. But you don't watch like the ball. You would have to see that on the on if, if anybody's watching the ball, that means they have no clue what's going on. Except what the ball does. A couple of uh, offensive linemen to the practice squad recently, Jesse Davis and Henry Bird. Are either of those guys guard, center, options like Sakel? Yep, they are. Yep. So it would be among those two guys, Dylan Manning and Corey Luciano. To yeah, anybody who plays O-line that's in our building are our options. Um, we'll see if any other added this week, but see how it goes. Will you prepare both, uh, both prior and um, – the right oh, Ward for McKivitz's spot. Would we what? Ready to go. Are you going to prepare both those guys? Yeah, we'll prior? prepare both of them. Yep. All right, thanks, guys.